society. Welcome back to my channel. This is the Brooklyn Knit Folk Podcast, episode number 73. My name is Jacqueline. You can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, pretty much then anywhere I'm active on social media is at Jacqueline Salem. This is a podcast all about knitting, sewing, especially lately, and whatever crafty things I happen to get up to in my day to day. So if this is your first time joining, hello, welcome. Thank you so much for checking me out. Um, I post a podcast ideally every two weeks about my, like I said, crafting adventures, and I also have a Patreon page if you want to financially support this podcast over at patreon.com slash Jacqueline Salem. So without further ado, let's get into the podcast. How are you guys doing? Have you been busy? Have you been crafting? Have you been making? I feel like there was like a little period there for a little bit, I don't know, especially maybe like two-ish weeks ago where I just kind of hit a wall with my making. A lot of it had to do with the fact that I was kind of stalled out from waiting for materials for some of my projects, but it was just kind of like hard to get my mojo going a little bit. And I don't know why. I think with just coronavirus, it makes everything so strange. And yeah, it's weird, weird times that we are living in, but slowly things are starting to open up in New York safely, of course, and at a distance. I just read today an NPR article that uh, the Met is going to be opening again on August 28th um, with only 25% of their capacity, which honestly sounds amazing. I'm so excited to book tickets for the Met. Like, can you imagine having so much more space to browse uh, the art in the galleries at the Met, like 25% of the people that are like normally allowed, like that's going to be insane. The feeder always goes off whenever I'm podcasting. My cats have an automatic feeder. It's good for them. It's good for me. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so I'm really excited that things are like slowly opening back up here. And yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to have like a little bit of normalcy back, eating on patios and just like really enjoying everything that we possibly can in the summer here in Brooklyn. So many things were canceled. Like uh, we live pretty close to Prospect Park and Prospect Park has this really um, amazing thing called Celebrate Brooklyn where they do concerts in the park like several a week all throughout the summer and of course they had to cancel that this year and it's a free a lot of the uh, shows are free which is just amazing to like pop over and hear some live music of some that you've heard of some that you've not heard of so yeah so it's just like a really fun thing and of course they canceled that this year and yeah so just like trying to find some sort of normalcy to the summer has been a challenge but yeah and i getting getting a little bit nervous because I feel like the days are getting shorter now. Well, they are getting shorter now, but the days are getting shorter now. And there's sometimes a crisp in the air. And I know many of you are gonna be extremely excited about that because as knitters, fall and winter like our seasons, but I just, I love fall. 
I don't like winter. I really do not like winter. So it's just, yeah, I'm already getting anxious about winter being here and it's still, you know, in like the 80s most days. So it's fine. I need to stop worrying about it. But anyway, as Stacy from Stress Knits would say, this is not a weather podcast. This is a crafting podcast. So you're here to talk about crafting. Let's talk about the crafting. First, I just want to start by saying you guys are so amazing. I learned so much from you in the comments. Whenever I ask questions, you're always so willing to jump in and help out with your knowledge. And I was debating with this dress project, which is finished, if I should do a Hong Kong seam finish on the inside. And 99% uh, of you said, no, Jacqueline, don't do it. Like, save it for a more appropriate project. And at first I was really bummed out because I really wanted to use that amazing Liberty fabric for a Hong Kong, Hong Kong seam finish in this dress. But as many of you rightfully explained and pointed out to me, which I will now share with all of you in case you didn't know, Hong Kong seam finishes are best left to things, uh, to projects that need some structure in them. So things like jackets or, uh, things that are already have a little bit of bulk to them, blazers, things of that nature. The reason being, uh, because a Hong Kong seam finish is like, uh, it's hard to, I'll, I need to leave a, a uh, tutorial in the comments, or not in the comments, in the description box below for you, so I'll be sure to do that this time. But it kind of wraps fabric around the edge of the seam. You don't see it, but it wraps fabric around kind of like the edge of the seam. And of course, we'll add two layers of fabric to each side of the seam. So when you do that, it's going to add additional bulk, which was something I was concerned about. I didn't know how much it would be. It kind of depends on the fabric you use, of course. Like if you do a silk, it's probably fine. But who wants to sew silk Hong Kong seam finishes? Like on seven different seams on a dress this long, it's like, yeah, I would have been crazy. Like crazy to do that. So I was considering using a Liberty fabric that I had. I ended up not doing that as you can see because I didn't want to add any bulk to the dress because this is my first, maybe not first, I'm sure I found something and ready to wear before, but definitely the first project I've ever sewn that is a more straight style bodycon dress. And it's not bodycon like super bodycon, it's more just like a straight style. But when you're a pear shape, I'm sure any of my other pear shape folks out there are totally gonna get this. It's so hard to find anything even remotely bodycon in ready to wear because if it fits on the bottom, it's too big on the top. And if it fits in the top, it's too small in the bottom. So I can hardly ever find anything in ready to wear that's like a bodycon style. So I'm really excited. I know this dress looks deceptively simple. Well, it looks simple, but it's exciting to have in my wardrobe because this is something that I normally could not have in my wardrobe unless I made it myself. So that is really exciting. So let's get to the details. I went over a lot of these in my previous episode, but I will share them again with you now. So this is a dress inspired by the Cezanne Jade dress. Cezanne is a French clothing brand that I've just like fallen in love with in the past year and everything that they have, I like want to make, down to the color of this dress. Um, I'll put in a picture here if I haven't already. It's an unexpected color find for me and I love it. I love it so much. My skin tone is like just slightly darker um, than like a lightest skin tone. And so this color, like I feel it's really flattering on me. It makes me look like really tan when I wear it, which I really like. And yeah, I'm just all about this fabric. It's called um, the cinnamon color. So it's like this cinnamon toffee brown color. And I love it so much. Of course, it's from Blackbird Fabrics. You guys know I love them. Um, it's a viscose linen noil. And the viscose is what gives it like that drape, similar to what a rayon would do. The linen, of course, is like the main part of the texture. Are you gonna be able to see that? So, and then the noil, of course, also gives it like that nice silky hand to it. It's really soft. 
and these kind of little slubs are from the linen texture. It's a really nice fabric, a really good blend. I've used it um, one other time before with the named clothing Kielo dress. It was a perfect pattern and fabric match for that as well. And I just love how it turned out and how the fabric feels. So the fabric, A++, although it did pose a few problems with the fitting. So I'll get to that in a second. But I used McCall's M7084 View A, this one right here, the straight style. And then essentially it has the same style lines as the Cezanne dress. Let's see if I can show you the pattern. Okay, so it has the same style lines as the Cezanne dress. It's got a lot of seams all the way from the bodice through the skirt. But it has the top, as you can see, that has like the collar and all of that, which I did not want. So I essentially just chopped off the top and finished it with a facing all the way around and then added these straps that I cut myself. The straps at the finished width are one and a half inches. So I cut um, three and a half inch wide fabric to allow for my seam allowance. And then when I sewed it together, of course it folded down to about one and a half inches. And I really love how it turned out. The fitting process was a bit of a challenge, shall we say, because McCall's patterns, if you buy them in their tissue patterns, they split their sizing up into like a bucket of smaller sizes and a bucket of larger sizes. And again, being a pear shape, I have to buy what's going to fit my hips. So I had to buy the larger set of sizes to fit my hips, but my bust falls into the smaller size. So I could only grade down to the smallest size available in the larger sizes to get to my bust, which was still at the end of finishing it. Like, I think I took it in about five inches but there are seven different seams. So I distributed that five inches across five of the bodice seams and it turned out, it turned out great. The one thing I will say that was making this a bit of a challenge is that this fabric does have some weight to it. Like it's extremely fluid, not stiff at all. It does not stand up on its own. And this fabric is also a, I would say, I don't know what the opposite of dense what's the word i'm looking for it's like a very it's like a looser weave fabric it is a woven fabric but it is a looser woven fabric so the weight of the fabric kind of like it pulls itself down the gravity pulls the weight of itself down on the fabric and before i had a chance to face the top of the bodice it stretched out a little bit before i could finish the top of it. So I tried it on again. There's like three and a half to four inches of positive ease in the top. So it's probably about one and a half to two inches more than I would like. It's not a deal breaker. When I try it on, it's fine. It's comfortable. It still looks cute. It's just like not as fitted as it was when I was going through the fitted process and I achieved a look that I really liked. So I was like a little bit disappointed by that in the end, but it's not enough to make me want to go back and redo all of that. Plus, I did not pre-wash this fabric, and as I mentioned, it is a linen blend. Linen uh, is known for shrinking when you wash it on the first time, especially. So I think it will draw in a little bit after the first wash. I'll try it on again, reevaluate after I wash it, but I think it's gonna be fine. It still looks cute. I still like it. And yeah, when I put it on, it was like such a strange experience because like I said, I just don't really buy, I can't buy clothing like this very often. So when I tried it on, I was like, man, it's so weird like seeing myself in something that's not like a full circle skirt or a half circle skirt or an A-line skirt, just something that like flares away from my hips in order to fit them and will still fit in the bust. So it was really cool to try this on and have this in my wardrobe. Uh, I did lose a little bit of steam on this while working on it. As I mentioned in my previous episode, I ran out of thread right before starting the buttonholes. And normally I would just charge ahead with a project, but because of course you see the thread color, but of course you see the thread color 
when you're sewing the buttonholes on the outside. So there was no way that I could get away with using a contrasting color fabric. It just wasn't the right look for this dress. So I had to wait to order some uh, thread. Luckily, Wawak shipping is so fast. Yes, you heard that correctly. That is Wawak. They are amazing resource for thread. That's where I've gotten my, gotten my serger cones um, for refills for that. I've purchased from them. This is my second time and their shipping is so fast. So if you're in the market for some thread but don't have a resource to go out somewhere, I would definitely recommend Wawak. I think it arrived in like two days, which is crazy. So I did get my thread, but it kind of made me lose a little bit of momentum on this project. I was just ready for it to be done by the time I was like finishing it up. But I try to like go even slower when that happens because I find myself rushing and cutting corners when I'm really ready to be done with something. So if I even get close to feeling that inkling, I set the project down and come back to it the next day. Even though I know it's gonna take me longer to finish it, it means that the final product ends up being better. So yeah, but it's finished now. I love it. It has my label from a Dutch label shop in there. They sent me these as a PR sample to try out and I absolutely love them. But yeah, it has my label. I have uh, had these buttons in stash already that I ordered for um, Etoile Dress Projects, which is a pattern by French Poetry. I just love that pattern, so I've ordered buttons in a lot of colors that I know I will end up using um, because I know I will make that dress more times. So I ended up using those for this, and I just think it's so cute. I love the color. Love the color so much. Oh, and then what did I end up doing for the interior, you may be wondering. So I did not obviously do the Hong Kong seam finishing. Thank you for your input. I ended up pinking the seams with my pinking shears. It's not as even as I would like it. And to be honest, this is not really the right fabric to be pinking with. You should really be, according to my research, you should really be pinking seams uh, on woven fabrics with really dense weaves. So things like quilting cotton, great for pinking. Loose woven, wovens, uh, not the best because they can still come unraveled. So again, I will just have to see what happens when I wash it. If it's ravelly, then I will take it to the serger and serge every seam. I started doing that, but I didn't really like how it looked. So I just stopped and decided I'm just gonna pink it for now. If I have to serge it later, then I will. But the contrast actually, it was just not doing it for me. I left it in some areas, like on the edge of the facing and um, on the button band, stuff like that. I left it in some areas but all of the other ones I pinked on the inside and it looks nice and invisible, so. Okay, one more thing. This is Jacqueline coming to you from the future. Well, it's not really the future, I guess, when you're watching it, but it's the future from when I recorded this podcast and it's important enough for me to want to tell you about this dress. One thing that kind of bugs me is because the weight of the fabric, like I said, it's very drapey and it kind of sags under its own weight in places. I'm thinking about adding some boning across the top so that it keeps its shape and therefore all of the button band stays straight because you can see like when I let it go, it like collapses under its own weight and creates these little like pockets right here. Whereas with whereas if it was structured, it would keep the button band straight. I mean, I wore it last night actually out to dinner and I really love it, but I just wanted to pop in and say about um, the weight of the fabric, like pulling the dress down in the center, and then I might try to add some boning here if I make any alterations, um, or if just a consideration about this fabric for future makes. The button band is uh, reinforced with, um, uh, oh my gosh, it's early in the morning, guys. Forgive me, what's the word I'm looking for? Interfacing. The button band is interfaced, so that's good at least. Um, but yeah, I think it needs a little more structure across the top, perhaps. Okay, 
back to your podcast. That is my finished McCall's M7084 dress that I hacked to the Cezanne Jade dress. Uh, I showed a sneak peek in my Instagram stories a few days ago, but I'm planning on taking some pictures um, in this soon, so I will post those to my Instagram feed when I take them. The next, oh, hi. Oh, do you wanna say hi? This is my baby love, Mika. I have two kitties. They're both black tuxedo cats. And this one is Mika. The way I say you can tell them apart is that Jafar has socks on and Mika has her toenails painted. It's just the easiest way to tell them apart with the amount of white on their paws. <sighs> okay, my next finished object. Have you guys done any lingerie sewing before because if you have not it's so fun so fun when I um first my first lingerie sewing project was the Boylston bra by Orange Lingerie such a pretty uh sexy pattern I really really liked it and the process of sewing it also extremely fun do not be intimidated by the idea of sewing a bra. It is not any more difficult than any other pattern. You just read the instructions, go step by step, follow the instructions, and by the end of it, you will have a finished bra just like you would have a finished top or a finished skirt. What? 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 As I was saying, the process of sewing a bra is so fun. It's like very detailed work. If you go slow and steady, you will have a beautiful finished product at the end. The only thing that can be challenging about sewing a bra is that the materials are so, they really vary from material to material. So you kind of have to let the materials guide you in like the size that you, well, not the size that you cut, it's really mostly the elastics, letting like the elasticity of the elastic determine how much you kind of pull or ease elastics into a bra. Um, but other than that, I would say sewing bras is really just as simple as reading the instructions on the pattern, like anything else. I will say really quick, cause it's bugging me that I can see this, I, all I had, were these peach colored closures. And I really, really, really want to get black ones so that it matches the rest of the bra. Luckily, this is a very simple swap out because it's the last thing that you add to a bra. So I'm ordering black ones so that the whole thing will be black. It really bugs me that that is peach, but I wanted to be able to try it on to tell you what I thought about the fit and just to kind of see what I thought about the pattern. This is the Hannah Bralette by Studio Costura Patterns or Studio Costura Shop. Um, it's a fantastic bralette pattern. I will start by saying that you will know based on your own experience if a bralette pattern is gonna be right for you. There's no underwire in this pattern, so it's not gonna have enough support for larger cup sizes. I mean, I mean if you like bralettes and that's your thing, go for it, like amazing. Um, but I will start by saying that um, I cut, let's see, I cut the medium size. So when I measured myself, I was right in between the sizing for a small and a medium. So I texted my friend Grace, Weezer Dreams on Instagram. I learned so much from her sewing stories. If you are not following her, make sure you do. I know she sewed uh, the Hannah bralette, so I texted her to ask if the pattern runs true to size, large or smaller, and she said it runs small. I'm so glad that I texted her first because I went ahead and decided to cut the size up. Um, like I said, I was in between sizes and the bra fits perfectly. So I will say that if you are in between sizes and you're considering making the Hannah bralette, I mean, for what it's worth, with my experience and Grace's experience, we both sized up or wished we sized up maybe in her case. I don't know what size she cut out, but um, I sized up and it fits really well. So that's something I would recommend if you end up making this pattern. Um, other than that, I think the fit is fantastic. Like I said, I cut out the medium. It's, it's lovely. I don't really know what else to say about it though. Oh, I will say trust the pattern. There was a few sets of instructions that I was like, I, is this gonna turn out? Like, is this the right way to be putting this? 
trust the pattern like do exactly what the instructions tell you to do don't think you were smarter than the pattern like i went into it for some instructions luckily i decided like no i'm gonna trust the pattern and i did and turned out the right way <laughs> so just trust the pattern if there are any instances where you're confused by anything um i'm considering taking out this clear elastic that's on the interior of the outer cup lining because you can see it and it bugs me and it's only really there for stability purposes it's not like crucial to it even says in the instructions that if it's if you're cutting a smaller size that that elastic is not crucial to the pattern so i'm going to experiment with taking it out and see if there's still enough support for the bra or if it like changes the fit of it in any way just because i don't like that you can see that and then the other recommendation i would make is that um when you're purchasing fabrics which by the way i got this all of this from taylor made shop she sells bra making kits which are fabulous because then you know you have all the materials that you need to make a bra project but i would strongly advise that when you're buying materials or buying a bra making kit that you purchase supplies that are all the same color for especially for your first one the reason being uh because a lot of times they sell like combo fabrics so they'll sell like a contrasting color liner so that it peeps through the lace which is like a purposeful look super super pretty and once you've had a little more experience sewing a particular bra pattern and know like what's gonna happen when you make it because it's like a little bit fun you're just trusting the pattern you don't exactly know how this is going to come together and somehow in the end it does but when you're sewing with all of the same color then you know that none of the seams are going to show so you don't have a difficult time picking out thread colors so it's like should i be picking out thread for the contrast color or should i be picking out thread for the main color, it's like hard to know sometimes, but if you have all of your fabrics that are the same color, so for example, all of mine are black, I knew I could sew with black thread and none of the stitches would show. So if you're buying all of a skin tone color, then you know you can use all, like you can use like a skin tone color thread, or if you're buying all pink, then you know you can use a pink thread and it's not going to uh, show up in places that you don't want it to show up. So that's my advice. Again, I bought uh, this kit from the TaylorMade shop and I used her uh, shop to buy the products, or products, to buy the supplies for my Boylston bra by Orange Lingerie. Highly recommend her stuff. She just has really great quality fabrics, really pretty pairings. And if for some reason, all she has available in the shop are like contrasting colors and you want to try to buy something, you can at least use the kits as a way to make like a shopping list so you know exactly what you need to buy if you want to buy it all separately. So she sells, you know, tools and notions and all the stuff separately in addition to having the kits for sale. So, yep, this is the Hannah Bralette, a pattern by Studio Castura Patterns with a kit made by, or put together by the TaylorMade shop. Fit is fantastic. And there's also in the instructions, um, so if something doesn't fit on the bralette, uh, Studio Costura gives you a lot of really specific instructions for how you can fix it. So they'll say, if the problem is that the band is too small, but the cups fit perfectly, do this. If the problem is the cups are too big, but the band is too small, do this. It's like it gives you very specific instructions for how to modify the pattern if something doesn't work. And the other upside is that bra making is so fast. I did this in a few hours, easily, easily. Cutting to finished project in like three to four hours. So highly recommend. I will definitely be making more of these. It's such a comfortable bralette. Next finished object. There are a lot today. So you may recall that I said I wanted to Hong Kong seam finish with some Liberty of London fabric from the last episode, but I was also debating between making some sleep shorts. Ta-da! 
these are my sleep shorts and I did not end up purchasing I think it's called the Riverdale I can't remember for sure river something Riverside can't remember for sure I'll put it on the screen but I ended up not purchasing that pattern from orange lingerie um, not because I don't think it's worth it but because sleep shorts after a quick YouTube search it turns out are such a simple project to make without without any pattern so if you are looking to getting into sewing and you have no experience and you're like what kind of project can i start with and you want something kind of low stakes small amounts of fabric go for a sleep shorts pattern my gosh this was one of the easiest things to sew i cut it another one of those i cut it and made it in like a couple hours today it's so simple so fast and you can use woven fabrics or you can use knits fabrics so it's very versatile i would suggest if you're a first time sewist going with the woven's fabric just because they're slightly easier to use than the jersey but you can still use jersey fabric or knits fabrics it's fine because you can use a regular machine just use a zigzag stitch instead of a straight stitch and you're good to go but yeah, there are so many great tutorials online for um, on, like on YouTube for how to make sleep shorts. Just Google or not Google, but YouTube search how to make uh, pajama shorts. So many good tutorials come up. So that's what I did. And I used my Liberty of London fabric. This is the Strawberry Thief design by William Morris in this like pinky red color with this contrasting teal and chartreuse and light blues and it oh it's just amazing it has like these gorgeous like birds in it paisley it's flowers it's so good i love this fabric and i'm so glad that i was able to make these shorts out of it i still have fabric left over i only had a one meter remnant that i purchased at liberty of london when i was visiting uh, my friend mina knitting expat of course i'm sure you guys all know her um and uh, i bought this remnant and two others actually and there are they're so good it's so good but yeah one remnant and i have plenty to make these shorts so it's a perfect stash buster if you don't know what to do with a one meter one yard of fabric and they just turned out so cute and i know i will wear these because I only have one pair of sleep shorts and I wear them constantly, which are these ramen shorts that I use to make my pattern pieces. Again, all of this is on YouTube. I will leave um, a few tutorials actually in the description box below for the ones that I watched and followed, but it is so, so simple, a very great beginner project. I will say that one thing I did differently than the tutorials was that I added a separate waistband to mine, which most of the tutorials didn't have you add a separate waistband. So as you can see, maybe there's a seam right here where I added a waistband and then folded it, folded it over to create this kind of waistband sheath to then thread my elastic through whereas most of the patterns don't even have you do that they just have you cut a taller uh, pattern piece for the short and then flip it over and stitch it down before and then thread your last like leaving a little gap and then threading your elastic through that way so i decided to add a separate waistband piece i don't know why i did that i just like i did it i guess because my shorts had that my my sleep shorts had that so i just decided to make that but you could do that too with like a contrasting fabric which would be neat like these sleep shorts have but yeah a perfect use i think of this liberty of london fabric if you've not heard of liberty of london before and you're again new to sewing it's like a fancy shishi fabric the quality is exceptional it's pretty expensive i will say which is why i only bought remnants when I was in London because it's a kind of expensive fabric but oh they're so soft it's so smooth so I'm really excited about that but as I was cutting one I was like why would I just sew one pair of sleep shorts when I know this is such a quick project so I batch cut two others so I have this pair and I also have 
this pair. So this is the only other one that is finished and oh my gosh, don't laugh. It's okay, it's okay if you laugh, but I'm just gonna say I'm so embarrassed actually to show you these shorts because they are like hideous. Okay, here's the thing. Like I said, I added a separate waistband instead of just folding down the fabric. And all of the tutorials that I found online actually used woven fabrics and not knits fabrics. So I will start with by saying that. But the, fa the waistband, like, skirt like started waving I guess it stretched as I added what she's hungry she wants more food okay okay I'll feed you in a little bit the waistband definitely stretched as I was finishing the edge with the serger and so it's like all wavy in there Compounded by the fact that the elastic that I put in this one is only half inch elastic and this uh, channel for the elastic is like definitely would fit a one inch elastic so maybe it wouldn't look as bad if I had put a one inch elastic in it but you know what? It's fine. I'm just gonna sleep in them but I just want to show you guys that like when these are on oh my god they're hilarious it's so bad. Oh hi! <sighs> They, yeah, they look hilarious, but the fabric is so soft that like, I do not care. Also, this fabric color in general is really not my color. It kind of makes me look dead if I do say so myself. The lighting is making it look better than it actually is because I am like, it's almost like the same tone as my skin tone. Like if you made this black and white, you probably wouldn't be able to tell a difference between the tone of my skin tone and the tone of this fabric. This I would say would look much better on a dark skin tone or an extremely light skin tone, not on mine. It just looks, it's not my color. But again, like I said, it's for sleeping. I'm not wearing it out of the house and it's so soft and I'll wear it. So I don't care about this wavy waistband, but it's ugly, I will say. I will say that. <laughs> so that being said, after I finished the blue ones and that waistband ended up so wavy, I did not yet finish the purple ones. This is what they look like before you start um, adding either a waistband or create like a channel for the elastic by turning it down. And then of course, when you add the elastic, it cinches in the waist a little more, but I haven't added my waistband for this one yet just because I'm wondering I kind of want to experiment with turning this one down instead of adding a waistband to it to see if that would give me a better result than this mess for this one so we shall see but yes sleep shorts three pairs two of them are finished and obviously these Liberty sleep shorts are the winner I used a one and a half inch elastic in the waistband for these and they're just oh, so cute, so cute. Both of the fabrics for my purple ones and for my blue ones were a D-stash from Grace. I always get the most amazing D-stash fabrics from her. Like I said, not exactly my colors, but they're so soft, like so soft that I took them because I knew I would just make sleep things out of them eventually. And so that day has finally come and here they are. So those are all of my finished objects. And then of course, here's my work in progress. I have two more works in progress to share with you. So I have finally cut out my first swimsuit pattern. I'm so excited. This is um, the Friday Pattern Company Vernaza two piece. It comes in a really great range of sizes, I think zero to 22. I have cut out a large for the bottom, the 1012, and then I have cut out the medium for the top. And it's this really cute, I'll insert a photo of it here, um, a really cute swimsuit that has like a tie detail on the top and then a high-waisted brief for the bottom. Super pretty, super cute, and I'm using this fabric from Blackbird Fabrics, of course. They are, uh, let's see, what's it called? I am using this ribbed poly swim trico from Blackbird Fabrics in the rosewood color. And it's this ribbed swimsuit material. I love this color so much. I, if you can't tell, I'm really into like the terracottas and all of that. 
So this is the fabric that I'm using for it. And then I also have a liner fabric that I bought, a poly swimwear lining. And I'm only using this on the bottom because the top has that tie detail. So you would be able to see it if it was lined in a different color. So I'm lining it with the same fabric that I'm using for the self, which might feel a little bit strange because it is kind of like a deeper rib. So I'm wondering how that's gonna feel on my body, but we shall see. But yes, love this color. All I've done so far is I've cut out the project, so it's nothing really to like show you, but I figure I'd show you the pretty fabric in all of its lovely texture. And here's the liner. I just bought a black lining, which now I'm wondering if I should have purchased like a skin tone one instead of black, but oh well. And in my Wawak sewing order when I was purchasing thread, I also purchased a matching thread so that I could make sure I had um, matching for any top stitching that I would have to do with this. I'm going to see how far I can get on the serger first. I only have black, white, and light blue um, for my serger cones, so I'll try to use the black, I guess, for the majority of it, and then any top stitching I do, I will use that thread that I purchased. And then last but not least, my new romantic dress project that I've been very excited to start. Uh, I made some mood boards at the beginning of the summer. And um, one of the dresses, of course, as you all know, I've been so inspired by Jamie Beck on Instagram. She is the one who started the isolation creation hashtag. And just her general aesthetic, I just like, oh, I would love to make some dresses like that. So I started. So my linen dress was one that I made like my big like almond colored linen dress. Um, and then now this one's like my second dress that's very much inspired by her aesthetic. So I have this beautiful textured tensile viscose in the blue mist color. This another one from Blackbird Fabrics. You guys know I'm an addict, but look at this beautiful texture on it and the drape so fluid and light it's gonna be a stunner so i'll show the inspiration pick that i'm using uh, to make this dress i can't see the front of the dress in the photo so i have no idea what the front of it looks like but it's enough to get me started those big like puffy sleeves and a really full skirt um, i've decided i'm gonna do a half circle skirt instead of a full circle skirt on it just to kind of see how that goes in a maxi dress because i have plenty of full circle skirts and i've made one half circle skirt and loved how it turned out i have four and a half yards of fabric so i'm not too concerned with running out but i think that with those balloon sleeves those take those sleeves take up quite a bit of fabric so I think if I do the half circle skirt that will ensure that I can make sure I can cut out um, both the balloon sleeves and a maxi length skirt with four and a half yards of fabric. So to achieve the look I'm going for my number one favorite McCall's M6955 and I have a pattern hacked bodice front that I use that kind of turns this into a square neck and then I'm just going to use the back from view C that you see here. And I'm going to use the sleeves from New Look 6560. The one from my rust color top, these uh, big balloon sleeves here. And I will add that to that bodice. I'm going to use the pattern pieces from the New Look bodice though to inform the armhole curve right here. It's just not a good idea to just willy nilly start attaching sleeves from different patterns onto the bodice of a different pattern it can be done but i think that the best way to go is to kind of overlay the bodice pattern from the sleeve pattern you're taking on top of the bodice that you want to cut to make sure that the curve matches the curve from uh, the sleeve pattern you want to use that way you know it will fit properly so uh, i'm in the process of cutting this right now it's over on our dining room table which is also my cutting table and I have overlaid the pattern pieces from this new look pattern bodice on top of the bodice pattern I want to use just to make sure that the sleeve fits nicely into the armhole. Um, as always when I make this pattern I do a lined bodice and then an unlined skirt so I'm going to finish the bodice part first without the sleeves. If you recall in a previous episode 
long sleeves just like are not something I wear super often in New York. It's just best to dress in layers because you never know. It's like even when it's cold outside, it's like hot on the subway. And not that we're gonna be on the subway anytime soon, but just the temperature fluctuations in different spaces in New York can widely vary. So dressing in layers really is like the best bet. So I'm not so sure how much I'm going to wear it if it has the long sleeves, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is finish it first full on as a tank style dress, and then I will finish the sleeves nicely on my serger after that before attaching it to the sleeve separately. And then if I find I'm not or attaching the sleeve, I'll attach the sleeve to the bodice, the finished bodice and if i find for some reason i'm not wearing it then i can detach the sleeves and just wear it as like a tank long maxi dress instead that way it'll kind of give me some insurance to make sure that i will wear it so if i find i'm not wearing it with the balloon sleeves then i can take those sleeves off and wear it um as a tank dress so i'm really excited so i'll be again using those two patterns and then just using a youtube video uh that i use um, that t like taught me how to make a half circle skirt draft just using my own body measurements. I will link that video also down below. Again, I think it's another great kind of tool to have in your arsenal because if there's like a dress that you like but you don't really like the skirt so much or you know, whatever, you just wanna change it up, for example, you can always sew the bodice and then just attach the skirt of your choice to the bodice. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. And I'm really, really looking forward to the results. I think it's going to be a super pretty and romantic dress. By the way, I didn't say at the beginning of the episode, but this is the Grace Corset Top, a pattern by Named Clothing. I have more patterns from them than I realized. I feel like I've been saying that a lot, like Named Clothing, a lot lately. I should probably take a closer look at their patterns to see what else they have, because clearly they have stuff that's my style, but I just like don't think of them right away. But yeah, so it's this really cute kind of corset top pattern that has these neat details. It was the first time I ever sewed flat felled seams, and that was really fun. The only thing I will say is that the top is like quite short. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it right there. Yeah, there you go. It's really short, but the way that the pattern pieces like are like the way the top is constructed and like these angled pieces i don't really know how to lengthen it it's been about two years since i've sewn this pattern though so maybe if i took a look now i would like understand immediately how to fix it but i do remember wishing that i could make it longer looking at the pattern pieces and knowing it was going to be too short but not knowing how to make it longer because of all the like angled pieces that it had. So it's cute, but it just has some limited wear. I pretty much only wear it when I'm wearing something high-waisted, so like high-waisted pants or tucked into uh, my cami skirt. By the way, I've been talking about this for ages, how I need to make another cami skirt. It is happening, my friends. I finally ordered more Tencel Twill. Tencel Twill is the same fabric that I used for my first one, and it's it's a perfect fabric for that skirt. So I ordered some more tensile twill in like a dark forest green. I think the color is called Midnight Spruce from Blackbird Fabrics. And I'm really excited to make another one and have another one of those in my wardrobe. The only thing I will say about tensile twill, it's a fantastic fabric. I don't know if it's just me and I take really good care of my garments. I pretty much only wash um, things that I've made in the washer on like, a low speed setting and it never goes in the dryer. I almost always hang dry any of my own handmade clothing. But the fabric, uh, it really, um, what's the word? it like fades, it fades over time, the color does. And I don't know why, which is like such a shame. I don't wash in hot water, only cold. So I don't know if you guys have any tips for how to kind of keep your tensile twill garments lasting longer, definitely let me know in the comments below. Or if you have like a good alternative for tensile twill, so something that's kind of got that weight and drape to it. It doesn't have to be a twill weave fabric, but just something that's kind of got that weight and drape to it. Please let me know in the comments below. I would definitely like to try out 
something similar just because it's so good for so many it's such a good bottom weight fabric like i use it for dresses but it's a really good skirt fabric it'd be a really great pants fabric because it's just got that nice like drape and weight to it so if you know of any good alternatives to tensile twill definitely let me know in the comments below and other than that i think that's all of the projects that i have to share with you today i did get some questions about how i know how to pick patterns for a pear-shaped body and that is something i definitely want to address in more detail but i'm losing the light right now so i'm gonna wait and address that question in a future episode but if you guys have any questions about stuff you want to know about please let me know in the comments i'm like so happy to hear from you and answer these questions on the podcast for you so Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please do so. It's um, at Jacqueline Salem. And you can also, again, follow on Patreon if you're interested on that or interested in that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.